do we go to heaven and stay there forever? Or alternatively, to that other place, which is a bit warmer? The question is, do we, do we go on to a spiritual reality that's apart from our bodies? Think about that. What, what's true? What's not true here? For if we stay forever in this spiritual reality without our bodies, if we, if we remain forever disembodied in a purely spiritual existence, then how did Jesus' and Paul's and other, others' words in Scripture on bodily resurrection. How does this theology of resurrection, which we find throughout the scriptures, how does that fit into a purely spiritual disembodied existence? Did God really create us in our bodies, pronounce us very good, and then intend that we would live in eternity without bodies, just floating around in heaven forever? How do you think about heaven? What do you envision when you envision that place where you go when you die. Today I think our text in John leads us to think more carefully about the afterlife, about what it means to be resurrected as Jesus was, and about the importance of resurrection in our present lives. The words from the Gospel of John we just read are a window into a very personal encounter between two dear friends. Jesus was very friendly with the Mary Martha Lazarus family. And Jesus meets with Martha just after Martha and Mary's brother and Jesus' friend Lazarus had died. And what, what ends up happening to Martha is that she has one of these great aha moments, one of those moments when the light goes on for her. And she has it in a time of great personal sorrow and struggle. And so often, isn't it, that that happens to us when we're struggling, when we're sorrowing, our defenses are down, and when we're feeling personally broken. And so it, it's in those times that Jesus is able to wonderfully break through and give us that aha moment that we so desperately need. And, and for Martha, it was an opportunity to make a life-changing decision. The first words we read in this story tell us that when Jesus arrived at the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus, Jesus had found that Lazarus was truly dead. He had been in the tomb for four days, John tells us. There's no mistaking it. The dear friend and brother was not going to wake up. In ancient times, people noticed that when people died, they looked as though they were asleep. And so they began to think, and perhaps this is the origin of, of thinking and talking about death, as a time of sleep or rest. And so we see this in various places in the Bible that, that death is referred to using uh, the imagery of sleeping. Even today we refer to a cemetery as a resting place. Many ancient tombs in Israel were constructed as beds. If you were to walk into an ancient Jerusalem tomb, you'd see a bunch of flat surfaces about six foot long and maybe two and a half, three feet wide. Uh, where a body could be laid out, and in some places they even put a little pillow or headrest for the corpse. And after a while, what would happen to the body is, of course, it would, it would decompose, it would disintegrate and, until there were just bones left. And at that time, the family would come in and, 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 and carefully and gently and gracefully take the bones and put them underneath in a cave with the bones of the ancestors of previous generations. And this is where we get the phrase in the Bible, he was gathered unto his fathers, where the bones are collected and then placed with the bones of the ancestors. Later on, uh, the custom developed to make little boxes. This is where we hear about these ossuaries, these bone boxes that have been found. So the body's laid out, the bones are gathered and placed in a, in a bone box. But, but back to thinking of, of sleep, Jews, Jews believe that when a man or a woman of the covenant, somebody who was in covenant with God, part of the covenant people, died, that their spirit would go to an intermediate state where God would care for them until the resurrection, until body could be rejoined with spirit. And so the body is laid to rest, and the spirit goes to rest also, but they're apart, but that's viewed as temporary for the Jews. 
They're always looking forward to the rejoining of body and spirit. And so Paul writes in his letters of dead people as those who had fallen asleep, resting with God until the time of resurrection, when all people together would be rejoined and brought before God for the final judgment. Now, while we often speak of the cemetery as a final resting place, in the Bible, the cemetery is not where human bodies remain forever, according to Scripture. The cemetery is where the body rests, and in God's presence is where the spirit rests. The goal in Scripture is always an eternal reunion of body and spirit in resurrection in a new immortal human body where, where we live as whole people, body and spirit, forever as part of the new heavens and the new earth that God will create. But many modern Christians have sort of morphed the two ideas of rest and resurrection together. You know all those jokes about going to heaven's gates and St. Peter and what happens there and you know we that becomes part of our thinking, part of our mythology and so we think that when we pass through those gates we we stay there in that place forever just spirits that are floating up in that out-of-body experience. We've simplified things by by combining those two ideas and we haven't thought carefully about what it means that we are looking forward to a bodily resurrection just like Jesus had. In combining rest and resurrection into this disembodied life, this long period just of being spiritual in heaven, we've made the afterlife, I think, much less interesting. After all, who looks forward to just floating around for eternity? I would get airsick after a while, wouldn't you? Just sort of floating there, you know, there's no real sense of grounding and, and being. We're made as spiritual people, but we're, we're put in bodies for a reason. That's who we are as human spirit and body together. What we've done, if we think about the afterlife in this way, and if we tell others and get them thinking, is that we, we've made it less interesting, we've made it less appealing, what we've done is we've taken away what's at the very center, the very core of the Christian life, resurrection. We just celebrated it two weeks ago, Easter Sunday, resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus and what it means to be resurrected with him in the afterlife. You might say, well, that's well enough, you know, I, but I'd just be happy to leave this body behind. You know, I've had, a, had enough of it. I, you know, way too much. I get sick. I, I get pe places hurt. You know, I, it's not serving me very well. I'd just as soon be without it. So let me escape the body. And that's, um, that's what some Greeks thought. And that's where you get this thinking that, uh, that, that came into human philosophy that the spirit is good, but the body is bad. The body is to be escaped. Yet before we so easily discard our bodies, let's think through the whole idea of resurrection and think about the big picture and how we fit in. <clears throat> let's return to Jesus' conversation with Martha. Lazarus had been sleeping in the tomb. He'd been dead for four days. And as John writes, we notice that John writes in his gospel to an audience that's not familiar with the geography of Judea. He, he comments, and, and he wouldn't do this if he were writing to, to people who knew the area, but he comments that Bethany and Jerusalem were very close, only two miles apart. So it was easy for Jerusalem friends to come and visit in Bethany to console the family. And, and this is what is happening some four days after the death of Lazarus. People are visiting, and Jesus then is among the visitors. Jesus is among the visitors. Why does John tell us that, that people are visiting? He wants to again emphasize, Lazarus is really dead. You wouldn't have people traveling even two miles to visit the members of a family if the guy was still alive. He was truly dead. And so we're about to see something very special if we follow the story through. And, and so we get this picture of people streaming in, making a journey two miles away, maybe more, and spending the day. And, and this is very similar to what went on in Africa when someone died. I, I